Hi ho everyone, CJ here, presenting you with a class guide for one of my favorite Dungeons and Dragons classes, the Bard. Together with rogues, they are the main source of most of D&D's tomfoolery. Due to charisma being the class's favorite ability, it is easy to turn them into beguiling adventurers that can overcome challenges through fine words, music, and spells. But they are not one-trick ponies. You can also rely on them as a jack of all trade class, covering the weaknesses of your party. We will go into more detail after the intro, so stay tuned. As wandering entertainers, bards accumulate a plethora of skills, knowledge, combat prowess, and magic through their journey. They can do a bit of everything. As you would expect, it's often not as great as other classes that specialize in a specific function, but they can still do an incredibly good job at it. But one thing they are really excellent at is impeding their adversaries and powering up their allies, using magic and their body inspiration. For bards, their most powerful weapons are usually their fellow adventurers. In the player's handbook, bards come in two flavors, or archetypes. The College of Lore bard, which is more spell and skill oriented, and the College of Valor bard, which is more combat oriented. Their versatility also allows the player to be able to tweak them until they are ridiculously good at certain things, even damage dealing or defending. Out of combat, they shine in social interactions. Powered by their class spells, they are social juggernauts. They are full spellcasters too, so don't forget the utility you can gain from their magic. Depending on how they are built, they can also be pretty competent in exploration. In fact, the world is their oyster, as the bard is the only class that has access to all skills. Let's look at this more closely by moving on to the class basics. The bard's hit dice is 1d8, the average size. Without any modifier bonus or penalties, they start with 8 hit points and gain the average of 5 hit points per level. They are proficient with light armor, simple weapons, a selection of martial weapons, and 3 musical instruments. But depending on the bard college they choose at level 3, they may get more. For example, the College of Valor Bard gets proficiency in medium armor, shield, and martial weapons. They have saving throw proficiency in dexterity and charisma, so they have better chance of resisting common damage dealing effects and spells like a red dragon's fiery breath, lightning bolt, and also banishment spells. Bard is the only class with access to all available skills, and they can choose three of them, so you can turn them into whatever you want. At level 3, if you select the College of Lore Bard Archetype, then your Bard would get three more skills for a total of six. I know that with so many skills to choose from, it is hard to decide, so I recommend going for some charisma related skills because many of the Bard's features also use their charisma ability, then the rest is up to you. As a full spellcasting class, Bards can cast spells starting at level 1. They use charisma as their spellcasting ability, and their spellcasting mechanics is relatively easy. They start with 2 cantrips and no 4 spells chosen from their class spell list. When they level up, check the spells known column on the Bard's class table to see if the number of spells they know increases. If it does, then they can learn a new one from their class spell list. On certain level, they can learn spells from any other classes. But whether they can learn new spells or not, they can replace a known spell with another spell from the bard spell list. As usual, the character need to have the same level spell slot as the spell's level to learn it. Practically, you need to be able to cast the spell to learn it. Bards don't get too many spells, but they have all their known spells prepared at all time. So that's one less complication for them. Check out the class features and spellcasting video if you need general refresher on spellcasting. They can cast ritual spells as long as they know the spell and their spellcasting focus is musical instrument. At level 1, they also get a feature that defines their class, Bardic Inspiration. Using bonus action, they can inspire a creature within 60 feet other than themselves. That creature gain a Bardic Inspiration die, a d6. And within the next 10 minutes, they can spend the body inspiration die to add to their ability check, saving throw, or attack roll. Obviously, the creature need to be able to hear for a feature to work. And they can only have one body inspiration die at a time, so no stacking. This feature can be used after the creature makes a roll, but not before the DM determines whether the creature's roll succeeds or not. 
Bards can use this feature as many times as their Charisma modifier, with minimum of 1, and they regain all their Bardic Inspiration use after a long rest. At later levels, the dice size will increase. At 2nd level, the Bard get the Jack of All Trades feature. They can add half their proficiency, rounded down to any ability check that they are not already proficient in. Pay attention to the word any. It means that you can also add half your proficiency to your initiative check and even ability check of the counter spell spell. Song of Rest lets the bard perform soothing music or oration during a short rest. Any friendly creatures, including the bard, can regain extra d6 if they decide to spend hit dice to recover hit points. Keep in mind that no matter how many hit dice is spent, the Song of Rest die is only applied once. Similarly, the die size for Song of Rest will increase at later levels. At level 3, Bards get Expertise. Like the Rogue's Expertise feature, they can choose two skills they are already proficient with and double the proficiency bonus. So if they have plus 4 proficiency bonus at level 9, that skill would have plus 8 proficiency bonus. The only difference here is that they can't apply to Thief's tools. At this level, they also get to choose their Bard College. For the purpose of this video, I will choose the College of Lore. By doing so, the College of Lore Bard gains bonus proficiency in any three skills of their choice. They also get the Cutting Words feature. Now, this is one of my favorite Bard features. Using their reaction, they can distract creatures within 60 feet that they can see. When that creature is making an attack roll, ability check, or damage roll, the Bard can roll their Bardic Inspiration die and reduce the target's result by their Bardic Inspiration die result. This feature won't work if the target cannot hear the Bard or can't be charmed. Like Bardic Inspiration, this feature can be used after the creature makes the roll but before the DM determines whether the creature's roll succeeds or not. Obviously, this is easier if your DM rolls dice in the open. Like me, but if they roll behind the DM screen, then maybe you can ask them to give you hints. They also gain level 2 spell slots so they can cast spells like Shatter. At level 4, they get their first ability score improvement and they can learn another cantrip for a total of 3. Level 5 their Bardic Inspiration die size increases to D8. Their Kentry powers up, dealing double the damage dice, and they get Font of Inspiration, which lets them recover all their Bardic Inspiration dice after a short rest. It may not seem much, but it is actually a major improvement that allows the Bard to keep inspiring others throughout the day. They also get level 3 spells that lets them cast spells like Hypnotic Pattern. At level 6, they get Counter Charm. The Bard can use that action to disrupt mind-influencing effects with their performance. This effect lasts until the end of their next turn. During that time, the Bard and any friendly creatures within 30 feet have advantage on saving throws against being frightened or charmed. This feature seems oddly specific, but it's pretty nifty if the party is going against dragons that can cause fear as part of their natural ability. The College of Law Bard also gets additional magical secrets, so they can learn two cantrips or spells up to spell level 3 from any class. Those spells are considered as bard spells and uses charisma as their spell casting ability. This feature is slightly different to the magical secret feature which they get later because it's archetype specific. It also doesn't count against their spells known number. These magical secrets can still be replaced by other bard spells when leveling up per usual, but not by spells from other classes. This is when players that want to deal more damage pick up more powerful cantrips or massive damaging spells like Fireball from other classes' spell lists. But don't let me make your choice for you. Level 7. They get level 4 spell slots and they can learn level 4 spells like Greater Invisibility. Level 8. They get their second ability score improvement. Level 9. Their Song of Rest die size increases to D8. They can also learn level 5 spells like Geese. At level 10, their Bardic Inspiration dice increases in size again, this time to D10. They can choose two more skills for their Expertise feature for a total of four, and they get the Magical Secrets feature. Similar to the additional Magical Secrets, the Bard can choose any two cantrips or spells from any class, but this time the spells level can be as high as spell level 5, and it is actually counted against the Bard spell known number. So don't make the mistake of choosing two spells from any class and two more spells from the Bard's class for a total of four. You only get two spells from any class. That's it. This is also when the Bard can start to cheese by choosing Paladin or Ranger exclusive spell that they can only normally get at level 17. Congratulations, the DM now starts to worry about your game-wrecking potential. Level 11. 
The bard's cantrip powers up and deal triple the damage dice. They can also learn level 6 spells like Otto's Irresistible Dance. Level 12, Third Ability Score Improvement. At this level, the number of spells the bard knows does not increase, but they can still replace a known spell. Level 13, their Song of Rest die increases in size to D10. They can also learn 7th level spells like Project Image. Level 14, they can learn 2 more spells from their magical secret feature, and this time they can learn up to spell level 7 spells. The College of Lord Bard gets their last archetype exclusive feature, Peerless Skill. It allows them to use their bardic inspiration on themselves when rolling for ability check. Combined with expertise, they can virtually do whatever they want now. Before you ask, yes, Peerless Skill also works with Counter Spell and Initiative Check. Level 15, their Bardic Inspiration die reaches its maximum size D12. They can learn 8th level spells like Glibness. Level 16, 4th Ability Score Improvement. And no new spells gain, but you can still replace known spells. Level 17, reaching the Epic tier, their Song of Rest reaches its maximum die size, D12. Their cantrip does quadruple damage and they can learn level 9 spells, such as Power Word Kill. Level 18, 2 more magical secrets. They can learn cantrips and any spells up to spell level 9. Their spells known number won't increase after this level, so from now on they can only replace known spells. Level 19, they get their 5th and last ability score improvement. Finally, at the maximum level of 20, they get superior inspiration. When they roll initiative with no more body inspiration dice left, they regain one use. Personally, I think this is slightly underwhelming for a level 20 feature, unless you play in campaigns with lots of encounters between short rests. At this stage, I would usually advise players to multi-class. And that's your 20 levels of bard. As we know, there are two bard archetypes, the College of Lore and Valor. The Lore bard gets additional magical secrets and features that boost their adventuring and social utility. The Valor Bard, on the other hand, is slightly tougher with their armor and shield proficiencies and can eke out a little more damage. While I personally prefer the Lore Bard, both archetypes can be equally useful depending on the party composition. They are versatile enough to be built to cover the party's weak spots. In general, Bards may start a bit slow, dealing little damage at first and their abundant proficiency doesn't give them significant edge over other specialized classes. But as they level up, they can become exponentially more powerful. One thing you can rely on them to do well is to support their allies and impede their enemies with spells. But doing this can sometimes cause the battle to be a bit boring if your DM requires the party to kill incapacitated enemies one by one. If I were the DM in this situation and see the inevitable outcome, I would rather just end the battle there by having the enemy surrender or let the players decide their fate rather than having everyone roll their dice for the next half an hour, finishing off enemies that can hardly retaliate. When you come to that situation, discuss with your DM about ending the battle early. He or she may refuse to do so, but who knows? Perhaps your crafty DM has a surprise for you? <laughs> In terms of multiclassing, bards work well with many other classes. They are so versatile, it really depends on the build you are going for. If you want more utility and survivability, I would even multi-class a College of Law Bard with Clerics. So I can pick up their armor proficiencies and guidance cantrip that can stack with inspiration dice to add even more bonus to ability checks. If I want a ranged striker bard, I would take a level in fighter to get the archery fighting style bonus and armor proficiencies and get ranger exclusive magical secrets like Swift Quiver to be able to attack 4 times in a turn. The combination is practically endless. You can put your favorite combination in the comment if you want so that others and I can evaluate it. A few more advice about playing the bard. While bards are great at empowering their allies, some players may not appreciate assistance, preferring to play lone wolf characters. Others may feel as if the bard is trying to control them, and they don't like that. So while playing as a bard, you need to be tactful of other players too. Well, that's it for me. Thanks for watching the DND 5e Bard Class Guide. If there is anything here that you don't understand, you can always rewatch the Learn How to Play Dungeons and Dragons series or ask in the comment section. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel and press the bell button for more videos like this. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter to get notified on future releases and a heartfelt thank you to all my patrons at Patreon for helping to make this series possible. 
If you like my work and want to help the channel out, please consider becoming a patron. CJ, over and out.